Good morning, Hartway. All right, all right. So my name is Cliff, and um, you know, for me, it is an honor. It's an honor to be able to get up and share. Um, it, I thank you, Pastor Danny, for allowing me this space to be able to be a vessel um, for what God has in store. And so before we get started, last time I got a chance to teach, it was the Sunday right after Valentine's Day, and we talked about vulnerable communication, right? And so I got a question for you. How many of you guys found a new taco spot? <laughs> huh? All right. For those that don't know, you got to go back and listen to the message. Go to YouTube, check out Vulnerable Communication, and then you can tell me after Valentine's Day, did you find a new taco spot? All right. So I'm looking forward to hearing some. We got a couple people that are like, listen, <laughs> you got a new one? Taco Haven. All right. <laughs> so when we get a chance to be able to come up and be able to be a vessel, I was talking with Pastor Danny and one of my other friends, and we talked about like how we're going to be able to prepare for this message, how we're going to be able to prepare every Sunday to be able to come up and teach. And truly, it is being a vessel. There's something that we pray about. And so being able to be a vessel means that we have to be able to be used by God. And sometimes we don't know what he wants us to talk about. So last Sunday when Pastor Danny was like, you know what you're teaching on? And I was like, nope. <laughs> and so then Monday comes and I'm, you know, Monday happens and still not thinking about it. Tuesday come. Now, Tuesday was one of those days. Tuesday was one of those days. It was a very, very high stressful day, had tough conversations with tough clients. And I was done at the end of the day. We had a two hour conference call that ended at 506. I was done. Like I was like, I need to go get a massage. I need something like these people on drove me a little bit nuts. So by that night, I'm getting in bed and I'm like, oh, crap, I got to teach on Sunday. <laughs> and I still don't know what I'm going to be talking about. So I wake up. I was like, I'm not thinking about anything. I can't prepare anything. It's just not going to happen today. So Wednesday morning, I get up. I'm getting dressed. I get in the car. And I'm headed to work, and I'm like, crap, what am I going to think about? So I get stuck out of, in traffic, as usual, it's Broward, right? And so I'm getting off the exit, and I'm at a red light. And for me, whenever I feel like God has put something on my heart, I go to my email, and I send myself an email, and I title it Book Ideas, in hopes of one day that I will actually write a book, you know, but that's for another day and another time. And so I'm sitting there and I look, I search book ideas in my phone. And what came up was the message I wrote, or not message, but notes I wrote that's titled Talking to Yourself. And that's what we're going to do today. And the interesting thing is, as I was, you know, got through the red light, got to the office, got busy, I had a very busy day today, um, that day, and I had a lunch meeting. Now, this lunch meeting that I have is with this guy by the name of Art. Art's like 80-something years old, but he's like never quit. He's a lawyer by trade, and he's always trying to do something. So we have lunch at the exact same spot. It's always in Boca at J. Alexander's off Glaze. That is his spot, to the point that the people there know who we are. And so... <laughs> Um, today, that day was no different. And so we, I go and I sit down and I get there before art, the waitress comes over and she's like, Hey, she's like, where's the older guy that's usually with you? And I was like, well, art will be here um, shortly. And so she says, well, what do you guys do? So I told her about, you know, all of the things we do with construction and development. And she was like, well, that's really interesting. And so I asked, I said, what are your goals and your dreams? And so she said, well, she looked at me with this intent, like so much weight that was on her shoulders and she took a deep breath. And she said, you know, she said, right now, I'm trying to focus on me. I'm trying to talk to myself a little bit more. I'm trying to just have self healing. And for those that haven't been here at Heartway long, you know that that resonates because here at Heartway, we are all about self love and we are about healing. If you know Jovi or Gabby or Mel, you know that we are trying to make that inner part of us a little bit better. 
But for me, when she said that, I chuckled a little bit. And she's like, why? What's up? And I'm like, because what you were was confirmation. Because I read my notes. But when, when we read something, we don't always know, like, if it, is it done yet? Has it been in the oven long enough? Are you ready for me to deliver this? Because it's important to us as teachers to ensure that the message that we are going to be giving is something that the people need to hear, something that will resonate, something that is, you know, whether it's conversations we've had from someone in a counseling session or somebody at coffee or sitting at the bar, and we need to be able to take that information and it comes through God's filter and he makes that message correct. So when she said she was talking to herself, I told her, I was like, this was what I wanted to talk about, but I wasn't sure yet. And so you were my confirmation in being able to t say, this is the message. So let's jump into talking to yourself. Now, disclaimer. I don't want you to be over there answering yourself. You know, you're supposed to talk to yourself. And I do not want to see anybody in a corner after church over in the corner arguing with yourself. <laughs> Listen, that's a whole nother problem. I don't know if we're going to be ready for that, right? Yes, yes. Listen, some of y'all be arguing with yourself and you lose. That's another <laughs> <st> <laughs> That's a different thing. <laughs> so when we talk about talking to ourselves, as I was going through the message, it came to me. See, there's a head you and there's a vocal you. That head you is the one that will never be quiet. You over there trying to give your head you the silent treatment, but it just won't shut up. You know, when you're trying to go to bed at night and you're like, why do you keep talking? Like, you're like, all right, I'm going to be quiet. And all these things are running through your head. It's just like, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. You've watched the clock go by. You're like, I just want to go to sleep. Please be quiet. <laughs> and you think about the randomest things. It's like, at first it was serious. Like, okay, I got to get this done at work. And the next thing you know, it's like, but I actually do like salmon. So should I have salmon tomorrow for lunch? <laughs> Maybe that's just me. But when we talk about talking to yourselves, in the head you, there's something that usually is happening. It's something that's playing on repeat. It's playing when things don't necessarily go as you have planned. And we all know, we've heard that adage that if you want to make God laugh, make plans, <laughs> right? There's nothing guaranteed about your plans except for they won't go the way you planned it. Just accept that, be okay, and just be pliable in that moment. But what's playing over and over again in your head? Is it, I've prayed to God and he hasn't answered or things didn't turn out the way that I wanted them to? So now what's playing in your head? He must be mad at me. God must be disappointed in something I did. Maybe I need to go back and re-examine that I, that I cut somebody off in traffic you know, did I give them the finger between the index and the ring? <laughs> it's not me. It's, it's a long, long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> but what's playing over and over in your head? I'm not good enough. I deserve whatever happened to me. Maybe you need to look and see whether or not you had a good foundation. Growing up, were you encouraged? Did you get that good job that you needed? You know, or that you're proud, somebody says that they're proud of you, right? But we don't always get that. Maybe your foundation was solid, but maybe life has beat you down so much that it's hard to remember. It's hard to remember that God has actually answered some of your prayers. It's hard to remember that, you know, I've been really wanting to get this done and God helped you to do it. He opened a door that had been closed because in that moment we can't see anything else. But we always have to remember that we have to be able to talk to ourselves. We have to have a good foundation. You see, as a builder, 
you, we have to have a good foundation before we put anything else on that, um, that lot. I have to make sure that the stem wall or the concrete slab has had enough rebar that's in there that when the concrete poured, it didn't get hard before we were able to really move it around. You see that foundation is the cornerstone of that building. That foundation, if it is bad, the temple will fall. Just as our bodies are temple, if your foundation is bad or if it's playing over and over again, the same negative things, that temple could not stand. It cannot withstand the things that you will inevitably face in life. So with our foundation, let's go back to the beginning. As we look at Exodus 3.14, I'll give you the, the prelude to this verse it's Moses talk, having a conversation with God because Moses wants or God wants Moses to go and talk to the Pharaoh. Now, you see, Moses was listening to that head. You like, God, what, what you mean me? You want me to go talk to the Pharaoh? You see, I have a stuttering problem. I can't go and talk to the Pharaoh like they won't take me serious. What what am I to do? I am just a a man here standing in front. How can I go and speak to the Pharaoh? Or maybe he was thinking, God, listen, a few years back, I killed a man. I killed a man trying to per save another man. And so I had to flee because of what they were saying. What if they bring that back up? But you want me to go and talk to Pharaoh? You see, God wanted to ensure that what was with him or who was with him was God. And so Moses said, well, what do I say? Who do I say sent me? And this is where we pick up. God replies to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. You see, God then mixed his words. He didn't hesitate to say who he was. See, he is the God of everything. He is the great I am. I am the healer. I am the redeemer. I am that lawyer. I am that opportunity that will come only through me. I am the great I am. We have to be able to look and fill in the I am for what God is for us. A lot of times we leave it blank. A lot of times we don't fill it in because we think just in that moment because he hasn't spoke to us right then and there that somehow he's forgotten about us. But that's not the case. We have to be able to understand that our foundation is rooted in God. And so I have a question for you. Who are you? Who are you? Are you a child of God? Are you who he says that you are perfectly made in his image? Because if he is the great I am and he resides in you and you in him, what does that make you? That makes you the child of the great I am. And if it's in your genes, then you are I am. I am good enough. I am strong enough. I am worthy enough. Sometimes we don't look to see who we are and whose we are. And we have to be able to take that as our foundation. You see, for me, I'm a Leo, baby. <laughs> right? Some would say that I'm a little bit, well, maybe a long time ago, but or we'll see what happens. I'm a little bit arrogant or cocky. Well, it's complicated. <laughs> what I am, I'm strong. I am weak. I am meek, I am shy, I am confident, I am doubtful, I am all of that wrapped up together. But my foundation of all of that is still God. So I may question in this moment right here, but you can trust and believe that that moment won't last that long because I'm going to stand confident in knowing of who I am. So again, I ask, who are you? You have to be able to talk to yourself. 
You have to be able to speak to that head you vocally. Sometimes you got to stand in the mirror and reassure yourself that you can make it through. Sometimes you got to go a little further back and talk to your younger you. What has your younger you seen and experienced and felt that you're still carrying to the present you? And if you don't stop it and put it into that, you will carry it to your future you. You see, your past is called your past for a reason. It is behind you. But you cannot keep walking towards your future looking backwards because the only place you're going to find yourself is still stuck in that moment from the past. I encourage you to stop telling yourself that lie. That lie is, is dead and gone. What are you going to fill your heart and your minds with today? What are you going to use as your foundation? Are you going to seek the world for what they may say about you or what they may give you to say, this is what I want for you? Well, that may be good, but what does my God, what does my father in heaven want for me? How does he see me? Life is going to beat you down. I'm sorry. If you didn't know that, maybe you're a little bit young, you don't understand that. Maybe you haven't experienced things yet. It will be okay. Rest assured that you will be able to make it through. David had to do the same thing. First Samuel 30 and six, I'll set this up for you. It shows where David and his men at this time, David had already been anointed to be king. But you see, Saul, who David loved, and Saul had at some point loved David, Saul started to get a little bit jealous because David had gone out and killed Goliath, right? And everybody is starting to speak about how great David is and not so much about Saul. David, or David killed, I said David, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all heard that, right? <laughs> Side note, listen, if you guys want to do public speaking, if you want to be able to get on stage and be able to share, be okay when you make a mistake. Don't let that stick in your head. That's another time about talking to yourself. You can get up here and talk. You can be on any platform. Listen, they tell you to picture everybody naked. I don't know if you want to necessarily do that, right? <laughs> But talk to yourself because you can do this. If you're called at work to be able to stand on a platform, don't let that stop you that, well, wait a minute, I, 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 can't, I, I can't do that. Make, if you make a mistake, it's okay, laugh about it, right? I've done it, Pastor Danny, he'll get up and be like, I don't even know where I was. <laughs> but it's okay because as long as you let the vocal you say it, then the head you won't be playing it over and over again. Right. That's the secret. All right. There you go. All right. Let's go back to David. So, <laughs> so David was ready to be king, but Saul was not ready to relinquish that power. Saul was sitting there like, why aren't they talking about me? And he probably had somebody in his ear saying, well, Saul, you know, everybody's talking about David. Nobody's talking about you. Are you going to let that happen? And then Saul set out on a mission to go and find and kill David. And so David had created this army of men around him. And Saul was like, we're going to do any means uh, necessary to be able to get to David. And so while the men were out, Saul came to the village and took all the women and children. And this is where we pick up in the story. And David was greatly distressed. For the people, his men that was with him, spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. David encouraged himself. Put your name there. You have to be able to encourage yourself. If David, going through what he was going through in that moment, encouraged himself, 
we have scriptures in, in the Bible, and sometimes we have to look at the scripture and try to understand how it's applicable to us. We have to be able to encourage ourselves so that way we can step up and be who we're called to be. Because if we don't, sometimes nobody else will. Sometimes you'll be standing there all alone. Romans 12, 8 says, if your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you're, you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Leave that up there for a second. If your gift is to encourage, encourage yourself. If your gift is giving, give to yourself. If your gift is leadership ability, take the responsibility for yourself. It's not whatever your past was. It's not whatever happened to you. And if your gift is showing kindness, be kind to yourself. Listen, if you, can't, if you treat yourself badly, how can you expect someone else to treat you better than how you treat yourself? I want a good man or I want a good woman, you know, to love me and be, you know, incredible and be kind and generous. But you can't be that to yourself now. So how will you be able to recognize it and receive it? I've always said that you have to teach people how to treat, your, treat you. But if you don't know how to treat you, then how are you going to teach them? You have to be able to set that tone about what you will and will not accept. I'm not talking about in some mean way, but listen, uh, I like to be treated like this. I need love, and I, quite frankly, I deserve to be loved well. I deserve to, as I tell a lot of female friends, that a woman deserves to be put on a pedestal, but she does not deserve to put herself there. My thought behind that is every woman in this room deserves to be uplifted and held at high regard. <laughs> but that's facts, right? You deserve to have someone take care of you. I'm not saying you need someone to take care of you. There's a difference. You deserve it. And likewise, women, you take care of your husband. You take care of your man. You love them. You pick them up. If they had a rough day, you love them. You, you give them that hug that they need. Because sometimes it's just that hug that a man needs. We walk through life carrying so much on our shoulders. And we're told by society that we should not let it out. Keep it in. Be a man about it. Be macho. Nah, it's okay. I'll be, I, I'll be the first to tell you, I'm okay crying. I'm okay to let tears run down my face in front of my wife, in front of my kids, and let them know that it's okay. In front of my friends, I have no problem letting tears come down. That doesn't make me weak. That makes me human. That doesn't make me meek. Amen. That makes me more like Christ. He cried tears of blood. Who am I to not let these tears drop so that way God can pick them up for me and hold them for me, right? So that way later I can cry those tears of joy. We go through things in life and if we don't, encourage ourselves, if we don't talk to ourselves, we will be left empty. So this morning, I was, got up, I read my scripture, and I had already had everything that I was going to talk about today. And when I read the scripture this morning, I heard God say, if you talk to yourself, what then? And I heard him just a still voice inside of me 
was like, but you got to listen to yourself. You know, when you go to the doctor and it's like, doc, you know, I'm feeling this and, you know, should I do this or do that? And they always say the same thing. Well, you got to listen to your body. And so if you talk to yourself, you got to listen. I can give you all the wisdom in the world, but if you don't take that wisdom and apply it, then it's just words. It's just letters. It's just your ABCs. It's the same thing that I tell my kids. I was having a conversation with my son yesterday and I told him, I was like, I'm trying to give you the blueprint. I'm trying to help you to be able to navigate through some things, but if you don't take it and apply it, then we just having a, a conversation right now. And so what I tell you is listen to yourself. Get still, get quiet, as hard as it may be sometimes. Because in that moment is where you will hear God. You see, when you talk about the head you and the vocal you, God rests right in between, right? And so when we are quiet and our spirit can be quiet and be at rest, is where God is just speaking to you, telling you, you got this, I'm right here. You see, God will sometimes tell you that I'm leading the way, just follow my footsteps. I know you can't see the path, but just keep looking and following my footsteps. Other times he's like, I'm right here beside you, I'm holding your hand, we're gonna walk through this together. And then when he feels like you got it a little bit, he'll be standing there right behind you, he'll be pushing you a little bit but you gotta be able to quiet the noise so that way you can speak to yourself and then you can hear yourself. There's a couple of quotes that I found. We're gonna go through some of those. I'll run through those real quick. And so Beyonce says, I should have came up with my cowboy hat on. I got my Cuban attire on. I should have came up with a cowboy hat. <laughs> Your self-worth is determined by you. You don't have to depend on someone telling you who you are. I love this one by Audrey Hepburn. She says, nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. Can we just have everybody say, I'm possible? possible. Hey. All right. When you say yes to others, make sure you are not saying no to yourself. You have been criticizing yourself for years, and it hasn't worked. (laughs) Try approving of yourself and see what happens. Lizzo says, I'm all about body positivity and self-love because I believe that we can save the world if we first save ourselves. Diane von Furstenberg, I like saying her last name is is Furstenberg. Um, (laughs) You're always with yourself, so you might as well enjoy the company. All right, I got to digress for one quick second. Y'all with me? It's okay. All right, so listen, when I was um, trying to date my wife and she was keeping me in the friend zone, y'all already know that story, right? (laughs) We went to a restaurant and she was getting ready to move back home, you know, because there was some dude over there. And um, I said, give me one last date before you leave. And so we get to the restaurant, we're matching as we always did, even though we wasn't boyfriend and girlfriend. And the waitress comes over and was like, you know, can I get you guys, you know, something to drink and do you, or you know what you're gonna eat? And I said, I'm just here for the company. I'm just here for the company. So, listen. <laughs> I can't help it, y'all. What you want me to do? Have you seen her? <laughs> Have you met her? I'm just saying, what is a man to do? Did you hear her singing? Listen, all right, all right. Listen, I got to brag on her a little bit more, right? 
So we, we had a groundbreaking ceremony on Wednesday for a school we're getting ready to build in West Palm. And so since it was um, the last day of Ramadan, the kids were out of school. So she's like, I'm going to come up to the groundbreaking. I'm like, cool, that'd be great. So she comes up and one of our construction partners walks over and was like, hey, listen, we were supposed to have some kids sing the national anthem. And they, you know, because of the school, they couldn't get it. It was like, can you sing the national anthem? And I looked at her, I was like, I didn't know about it. I just learned when you learn, so don't be looking at me because they're calling you on the spot. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. Honestly, listen, I didn't know. Y'all my witness, I didn't know. So she's like, uh, uh, really? Okay. And she goes off. She goes and practice real quick. Ten minutes later, she's up there singing the national anthem at our groundbreaking ceremony. So... <laughs> Right on the spot. If that ain't an incredible woman, listen, I don't know what is. But I digressed a little bit. Oh, here's this quote. I don't, it's some handsome guy, you know, that, that wasn't humble, right? It's okay. He's an incredible guy. But <laughs> how you love yourself will determine how capable you are to love someone else. When loving yourself, love yourself the way you need to be loved, right? Just like when you love someone else, you have to love them in their love language, not yours. As we start to close, I have one last question. What would God say to your head you and your vocal you? What has he been trying to tell you? Have we listened? Have we been shutting it down? Have we allowed the world's audio to be louder than the father that loves us? Have we believed what the world has said greater than what our father has said about us? He knitted us in our womb, but yet we rather listen to someone on Instagram about what they may have said about who we should be and what we should look like and all of these different things. But He's like, I created you. I know how many hairs are on your head. I know what makes you tick. I know that if that person does that one more time, you are on the edge of going off on them. But you don't want to hear what I got to say about you. I want to be able to tell you that I love you. I want to be able to tell you that I'll never leave or forsake you. I want to be able to tell you that I am right here even when I am not speaking that I haven't left you. I have heard all of your prayers. And if you just give me time, if you just give me time, you give me another day, you keep taking another step, I will weave it all together for your good. It says it in his word. He wants to give you a life that will prosper you not to harm you. Why can't we believe that? Why is it that when things get too tough, we forget that the things that he has said to us? We cannot let the troubles of the world, the troubles that we may have caused, our past speak louder than the God that loves us. Don't let that sit on you. It's, it's done. It's ran its course. It is no more. Don't ignore that it, it happened. I'm not telling you to do that. What I am telling you that it is not serving you well. So if it is not serving you well, then let it go. Let it go so that way you can go and be who you've called to be. Let it go so that you can be free. Why keep chained to something that happened so, so long ago? Tell yourself, I am letting it go today. For I will not step into another morning. Every day is called a gift. I know this isn't the same term, but the present is a present. 
So allow us to be able to live our lives like that. Our past, it is behind us. So let's look to our future. The things that has happened to us mask the God that is within. Why do we allow that? Why do we allow the things of our past to mask the God that is within us? Because when we peel back those layers, we get to who we truly are. Don't question yourself. I said talk to yourself. Don't question yourself. Don't question who you are. You are who you are. You are part of the great I am. We got 10 affirmations, and I, wanna, I want you to say these really quick with me, all right? You guys ready? You got to say it. And I'm talking about boldly because they're declarations, right? You heard in our worship, make these declarations because in Write them down, take a picture, uh, go to the Bible lab that my wife does every Sunday. Go to the Bible lab, click on events. They're right there, screenshot them. Let's make this a declaration. And you know what? As you make it a declaration, give it to somebody else that may need it. You, we've all seen that person that's walked with a little bit of slump in their spirit. spirit. Here we go. You guys ready? We ready? ready. All right. I am lovable. I I deserve to be. I I am responsible responsible for my own happiness. happiness. I I profoundly and deeply accept myself. myself. What I want for myself is more, is more important than what others want from me. Than what others want from me. I don't need other people's approval. I don't need Instagram's approval. I don't need Pinterest approval. Or TikTok or anything else. <laughs> I don't compare myself to others. Because we do it too many times. Run your race. Listen, sidebar again. I'm sorry. I got a little sidebars. I'm sorry, Pastor. Then it's okay. <laughs> do you know why it's not good to wear somebody else's shoes after that you put their foot in there? They don't fit. You know why? It's because, so I was a children's shoe manager for years, right? And so if you go after a child or after you've worn your shoes, you put your hand in there and you feel your toes. You feel the indentures, or in, yeah, in the denture, indenture, uh, it's not dentures, indent, indent, there we go. You know what I'm talking about. They're in your shoes. Indentations, there we go. You feel it in there. So that cliche that you can never walk in somebody's shoes, you can never fit in them, you truly can't because your toes won't line up. You cannot walk in somebody else's shoes. So why are you going to compare yourself to somebody that ain't meant to walk the walk that you're walking? That's all I got. (laughs) To dream of what I wish I I was is to waste what I am. am. One more time. To dream of what I wish I was was is is to waste what I am. How I think or feel is not who I am. am. I look for my stars stars in my scars. scars. It is by God's, Jesus' scars that we are saved. So if his scars saved us, what do you think your scars are doing? Right? I love each of you dearly. I... (laughs) And I want nothing but the best for each of you. I want you to be healthy inside and out. I want you to know that no matter the things that you go through, you got to keep telling yourself, I'm good. 
all is well within my soul. If you need to repeat that every day, if you need to repeat that after you had a difficult conversation, all is well within my soul, even though it may not be at that moment. As long as you keep telling yourself, you will believe it and you will live it that way. Before we pray, I got one more. I didn't put it up here. By Terrell Owens. Those that don't know, he's a former wide receiver NFL player. And I want y'all to scream this as loud as you can after me, all right? I love me some me. I love me some me. Let's pray. <laughs> God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being our center. Thank you for rooting us in you. Thank you for putting your spirit inside of us that we may be able to use that as our foundation of who we are. Thank you for being just an amazing you. Thank you for being our great I am, being everything that we could ever hope for or dream of. Lord, we come to you seeking you each and every day that we may be able to speak to ourselves. Allow the words that come out of our mouth to encourage ourselves be from your heart, be from your lens and your perspective. Bless every person that is in this room and help them to be able to go out with a new light, a light so bright that nothing that this world throws at them could ever distinguish. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Hartway, I love you guys. Thank you for being here today. I hope you have an amazing, amazing week.